0800 with your questions. I'd like to, to start off by talking about tinnitus, if I may, because there is some new research out today about it, Dr Chris. Well, there's a paper that's just come out in it just recently in the, in the journal eLife, and uh, it's a, a group who are in a number of countries, including China and also the US. And although th- what they found has been suspected for a while, no one actually could prove what was going on. Tinnitus is incredibly common. Maybe one person in every four has some degree of tinnitus. It becomes much more common as we get older, and it's also much more common in people who have some degree of damage to their hearing system. So anyone who's been exposed to loud noises during their lifetime tends to get it. And people will classically say it's this sort of grinding, whooshing, mechanical sound, and it can be really loud and distracting. It can keep people awake. It can be very disturbing. M- many famous musicians have complained of tinnitus, mm. and it really put them off their art. So what is it? Well, originally people thought, well, it, it's because your ears are damaged. It must be something to do with the way your ear works. And then some bright spark came along, and they'd cut the nerve between the ear and the brain, and the tinnitus was still there. So they said, well, it can't be the ear that's broken. So we suspect there must be something in the brain that's not working. But how do you test that? Well, what Richard Salvi, who's a researcher at the University of Buffalo and his colleagues did, um, and we're actually going to uh, talk to them in Five Live Science this week, which people can pick up on Saturday morning. Um, what they did was to give mice tinnitus. <laughs> it sounds bizarre, but how do you get an animal to have and describe they've got tinnitus? They use aspirin. If you give a big dose of aspirin to a human they will begin to experience a sort of temporary tinnitus, a ringing in their ears. They've got a a clever way of eliciting the same response in mice. And what they then did, once they had mice who had tinnitus, they were then able to record using tiny needles from the structures in the brain that decode sound information. We know where the different parts of the brain are that receive input from the ears, and they were able to put needles into those and record the nerve activity from those regions. And what they found is that when mice are having tinnitus, it is not a signal coming from the ear that is the cause of the tinnitus. It is because the brain starts turning up the volume it's expecting to hear, corresponding to sounds from the ear. So if you've got a patch of your ear that's damaged, it's not sending signals into the brain. The brain thinks it's just not listening hard enough. So rather like you turning up the radio at home to make the the radio easier to hear, but then the hiss goes up at the same time, the brain turns up the internal volume, listens a bit harder, but in the process amplifies all the intrinsic noise that's already there, and you get these sounds. So tinnitus is sort of the auditory equivalent of phantom limb syndrome, where people who've had an amputation, for example, of their arm or leg, can still feel the missing body part and say it hurts. Tinnitus is the audio equivalent of that. And this can be caused by loud noise. I, I mean, I was reading some, some research the other day and it was about you know, the, the high risk, particularly to a lot of younger people now who are using um, headphones which don't cover the whole of the ear. They, they go inside the ear. And apparently that can cause increased damage because it's going up to a much higher volume than they should ever, ever aim to have. I think the loudest volume you should have is if you're sitting in a a busy city street, the noise that you would have inside the car with the car doors and the windows shut. Yeah, there's no doubt that people, uh, young people especially, are being exposed to sounds occupationally and recreationally, which are dangerous to their hearing. And Often, with those very small earphones, because they're not terribly high quality, and they, as you say, they don't go round the ear, so they don't move large volumes of, of sound, uh, move large volumes of air. As a result, they don't tend to produce a good representation of all the sound frequencies. And as a result, people tend to run them hotter. They turn them up louder. And as a result, some of the energies that their ear is hearing are way beyond the range that would cause damage. And, and so this is something that's probably going to mean we're cruising for a bruising when we're older. Mm. There's a whole generation of been to, to nightclubs and stuff like that who, who may well have, have damaged their hearing. But then, again, it's not uncommon to see roadside workers hammering away at roads. A lot of the time they do wear ear defenders these days, but 20 years ago... They didn't. Yeah, so uh, where, uh, where I'm from, one risk for another. Yeah, where, where I'm from, the, the the number of men who've been in the shipyards, um, and been 
using hammering machines, using such loud equipment with absolutely no protection because it, they're just, there weren't the health and safety regulations. There, there wasn't the kit. Nobody even thought about it. And, and they've suffered from tinnitus or, or deafness since. Um, I'm thinking for myself, you know, you, you go... T- a few weeks ago, I was at a music festival. Things were pretty loud. You get a bit of a ringing ears the next day, but you do recover from that, don't you? you it's it's well, not we a case. Used to judge of... a rock concert as to whether it was any good or not by how long your ears were ringing. <laughs> but I, get, I went to this Pink Floyd concert when I was about thirteen, and uh, and I thought this must have been a bloody good concert because I can't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> My bloody Valentine. That's the same thing. <laughs> You know that if you've been there for an hour, you're not going to really hear for the next three days. You'll wait till Wednesday until you can hear what your mum said. Um, 